should a beginner start with compound movement before using the brick 20? And the reason he's saying that, because would it be better and easier for a beginner to start with compound movement, even though the muscle will be working partially, uh, because it's easier to accomplish that movement. He will have support of different muscle working partially at this, uh, together. And then once that person gets stronger, then he's uh, able to do the brick 20 because he thinks that the brick 20 are advanced and they require, first of all, a, like a certain level, and then he can move on to the brick 20. Well, the first thing that has to be said is that anytime you talk about uh, a group of exercises, compound exercises, isolation exercises, kettlebell exercise, anytime you talk about a group, you're already making a mistake because every exercise has its own unique characteristics. I don't say that all compound exercises are dangerous. Some are. I don't say that all isolation exercises are good. Some aren't. Um, some kettlebell exercises aren't bad. Some are very bad. So the idea that we would categorize a whole bunch of exercises and then refer to them that way, that's not good. For example, it wouldn't be bad for a beginner to start using a bar, a flat bench barbell press because it might be difficult for that person to start coordinating the balance of a pair of dumbbells, right? But I do not think that beginner should start doing parallel bar dips or deadlifts. Interesting. Those are dangerous exercises and the parallel bar dips are overwhelmingly difficult for a novice. So no, that is, that is a compound exercise, but a bad one, certainly for a beginner. Now, if you wanted to do squats with body weight, that's fine. That would be like doing a barbell press. You can then graduate from a free weight body squat, a uh, body weight body uh, uh, squat to, you know, your leg extensions or your sissy squats, fine. You can move from a flat bench barbell press to a decline barbell press to a decline dumbbell press. That's fine. But I would not ever recommend someone doing a deadlift. Well, uh, look, bending over and picking something off the floor is essentially a deadlift, right? right? So the idea that you're bending over and picking something up is 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 not a bad thing to do. I mean, we do this in day-to-day -day life. But doing it with a weight that is maximally challenging is dangerous and, and has very limited benefit. So if someone wants to do a deadlift with a very, very flat back, very strict form, with a very moderate weight, it's okay. It's not dangerous. But once you start feeling obligated sometimes to start using a weight that the next guy is using heavier and heavier weight then you start risking rounding that back and then you start questioning the value the benefit what is the benefit well a deadlift is mostly hip extension and you can do better hip extension in other ways mm -hmm. so now you mentioned doing the body squat and doing a bench press with the bar what are the exercises that they can do, the compound exercises, compound exercises that they can do, uh, that will not really harm them if they, if that's the only thing they have access to. Well, uh, certainly the flat bench uh, barbell press would be one that wouldn't be a bad one to start with. There is no reason why anyone should start with a bent over barbell row. It's just such a bad exercise. It's so lacking in benefit mm -hmm. and so high in risk that there's no way that you would graduate, move from a really, really bad exercise. Because I would not call a flat bench barbell press a really, really bad exercise. I would call it a less than ideal exercise. Mm -hmm. Because you're not bringing your hands together. Right. And because you're not pushing quite in the direction of the midline of the body, you're pushing okay. laterally to the side, which is meaning you're involving more triceps. But it's not horrible. But a bent over barbell row is so lacking in the right anatomical motion for the lats or the middle trapezius and so loads the lower back that it's just not worth doing. Parallel bar dips should never be done, especially as a novice. The first time I, first time I ever did it, I thought, boy, I can totally, I didn't even know what this was called. It was the front delta. But that's exactly where I felt it. And that's exactly where one would because of the mechanics of the exercise. Mm -hmm. What about, um, because what people have access to, maybe like uh, they will do pull-ups. So what about the pull-ups? Well, <laughs> See, the, the pull-ups uh, has a couple of problems. The first problem with the pull-up is that it's body weight, right? And so that means that you're going to be limited in the number of repetitions you can do. Um, you, 
you probably will have your form compromised. You will be doing things with your form. I, by the way, when I say form, I, I don't want to make people think that there is such a thing as a perfect form chin up. Right. You can do a chin up without swinging or, or, or twisting, but that movement is still not quite the right movement for the latissimus, not mm -hmm. as right as a one arm pull in. So even, even doing it with perfect form, meaning without any swinging or twisting, um, even that is still not the precise motion of the latissimus. Um, so you're starting off with that factor and the fact that you have to use body weight, which is usually too much. You don't get a complete range of motion. You can't bring your arm all the way along uh, to, to the inside of your body. Um, so, and, and it's also very discouraging. I mean, people that try to do a pull-up thinking that it's, it's somehow the measure of, of masculinity, that if I don't do 20 pull-ups, then I suck. You're it's weak. like, that, yeah, that's ridiculous. It's such a bad way of evaluating ourselves. So I, I would, you know, I, if I have a lat pull down bar, I would rather do the one arm. Oh, okay. I yeah. would rather that happen than to do a pull up. This, one, this exercise that Doug just mentioned, you can find it. We did the analysis of this exercise in the uh, anal analysis of back exercises. I remember yeah, that. scroll yeah. down, you will find it. Yeah. Uh, so do you agree with his idea that the Brick 20 are advanced and a beginner should start no. with the compound? No, the Brick 20 is nothing more than anatomical motions. There's nothing advanced or novice about anatomical motions. They are the purest, most natural anatomical motions for our body, period. The weight you use, the intensity you use is what determines whether it's novice or whether it's advanced. I would have grandma do the break 20. <laughs> I would have, you know, the six-year-old do the break 20. If, you know, I could arrange it in a way that, you know, suited the body size. Right. But yeah, there's no, there's no limit. The only person that I might, uh, let's say, make modifications for would be someone who's already injured, already compromised, and cannot do normal, natural anatomical motion. Right, perfect. We can move on to our next question, which uh, you kind of like started it. If you're working for strength, if like, let's say you're trying to gain strength and size, is it like uh, possible to not lose body speed and like moving fast and staying uh, fast, quick? Okay. Yeah. Um, the first thing that has to be understood is that speed involves a strength to weight ratio, right? So that means that if you gain a certain amount of muscle weight and at the same time that you're gaining muscle weight, you're gaining strength, but not at the same rate that you're gaining muscle weight, then you might end up being a tad slower. The trick is to gain a strength at a faster rate than body, than body mass and muscle mass. So, um, what I would probably do is I would tailor the, the brick 20 in a way that sort of mimics what you want to have happen. So I would use maybe fewer repetitions, faster repetitions, uh, more explosive repetitions, um, uh, because that's what you're going to need if, if you're doing speed. But look, there was a, there was a study that was done once with soccer players and they had the soccer players working their upper body with strength exercises and their lower body with endurance exercises. In other words, they kept doing the running that they would typically do, but they were doing low repetition, high weight strength training for the upper body. And they found that they lost endurance on the field. And, and that makes some sense because this is the way systemic things work in our body. Their body senses something happening over here and it tends to share it over there. So um, this is the, the, the principle of cross-education. So if you were to do, let's say, um, an exercise, an activity with your right hand, that your left hand will benefit some of the benefit that you gain on this hand, either whether it's coordination or whether it's strength. If the upper body is gaining power, it's losing endurance. 
And that communicates to the lower body to do a similar thing. You could actually measure the strength of the lower body afterwards and the endurance of the, and you would find that it's gained strength and lost endurance, even though you didn't do anything for the lower body different than what you were already do, already doing. So um, it's a tricky thing. I, 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 you would have to experiment with that, I think, and try it a little bit of it. Anything you do can be undone. So um, if you can, if you try a particular application and it tends to not go in your favor, you can change directions a little bit and try it a little bit different way. Interesting. Uh, you mentioned using the brick 20 to mimic the speed or the strength or how slow, how fast, because we didn't talk about this before. So uh, it's the first time actually we say that you can mimic that. So can you elaborate a little bit about that? Like, let's say if someone is, uh, an American football player. Okay. Mm -hmm. So what kind of uh, speed will he use? I know there is many position also. We can choose one and say right. like, what's the best? Well, well, like broadly speaking, let's just say that, that your sport requires speed uh, or power uh, out of what could be considered a squat position. So you need explosive gluteus contraction. Mm -hmm. So you could get on the multi-hip machine and instead of doing, you know, a set of 10 repetitions with a weight that challenges you for 10, you might want to, let's say, try to do as, the reps as fast as possible so that you're really pushing down and back. Now, the problem with this to some degree is that when you use speed, you create momentum. Right. So if you, if you throw this thing down, that pad may even leave your leg and then, and then swing back. So um, the trick would be to, you know, accelerate and then slowly decelerate uh -huh. before, before on the negative your leg yeah <laughs> so you'd have to experiment with that but obviously when you're when you're running off the line you're going to do that as quickly as possible so you want that muscle to get used to it. now you could do it with you can do it with body weight squats you know and body weight squats would be great for that reason because you can do uh, a kind of catapulting of yourself which, you know, so what? You throw, you, you, you leave the ground, and then you land. You know, a jump squat is one of the best ways to get that explosiveness. Mm -hmm. But these are the things you want to mimic. It's the same motion, just applied differently. And that's worked combined with the, the skill movement of that specific sport. Yes, yes. And by the way, um, you know, you can, you can also add um, what could be considered bodybuilding style application of Brick 20 to your skill training for your particular sport and end up with a, a relatively good result. Now, if you happen to be one of those people that gains muscle very easily, you might find that you're gaining too much muscle mass and you can't keep up with the strength to, to you know, the strength to weight ratio. So you might have to back off it. But, but I would not make that assumption first. I would make the other assumption first is that, that any weight training will be helpful and applicable to your sport. 